Rodney Henderson, head pastor at Abundant Life Church in Brookhaven, Mississippi. Praise God. Thank you. All right, so good evening again, everybody, and listen. So y'all expect me to follow that one. <laughs> How many of y'all have been to meetings and services before and somebody was ministering the word and they talked about several different things and you sitting out there and you said, listen, if they give me the mic. <laughs> you ever been there? Amen. They said a lot of things in their message and if they, if they, if they would just ask me, I can share something. Y'all ever been in a meeting like that? Yeah, yeah. I remember being in early on, I remember being in a meeting, and this this meeting, the, the, the preacher was preaching, I mean preaching that word, and I said, listen, God, you ought to speak to him. <laughs> we just speak to him, God. I got something to say. I got something to say. That meeting was high, the spirit was high in that place, and listen, the word of God was coming forth just like it was just a few minutes ago. I thought about so many things I could come up here and say after hearing her. It just triggered a lot of different things in me. How about you, did it do some of that in you as well? Amen, amen. Well, I'm gonna do what I believe I'm uh, supposed to do tonight. Again, thank uh, Prophetess for having me, Prophetess Dixon for having me here tonight. This weekend, I don't take that lightly. I want you guys to know that. I appreciate that so much that she would invite me and trust me to come and talk to you. So we're going to get right into it again. You got your Bibles, you got your tablets, you got your phone, whatever it is that you're going to use with uh, to look at the word with me tonight. I want you to hold it up. Let's do our confession again. All right, you have your Bible on your hold and say, "This is the word of God." This is the word of God. It is alive. It is alive. I'm powerful. And I'm sharper than any two-edged sword. The body, the, body. The, soul. the soul, and the spirit, and the, spirit. the joints, the and the marrow, and, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of my heart. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. And I am. And I am. And I am. And I am. Who it says I am. Who it says Now shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory. Glory. Yes. Well, I'm probably not going to use this mic. I'm going to sit it down right here. I'm going to leave it on so it still might pick up pretty good. Uh, I want you to turn your Bibles uh, tonight to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, popular passage of Scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to read the, the first six verses. I'm going to read out of the King James Version. And it reads, Now I call myself to seek you by the mercies of by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with, the, with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for this word. God, we thank you that you'll get glory for it. Now, God, we thank you that you'll, you'll lead me, you'll guide me by your spirit. Yes, Lord. God, you'll open up our eyes. I thank you for opening up the hearts of the people yes. that are in this place today, that they'll be receptive to receive the word 
that's about to be spoken. We thank you, God, that their hearts are good ground. Thank you that they have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying yes. unto us tonight. Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen. Now, let me just give you just a little backdrop of what's going on here. Of course, Paul is an apostle. He is an apostle, and he's being challenged. He's been challenged by false teachers. He's been challenged by different ones in this Corinthian church about his calling. And they, were, they would say that, listen, you are a bad dude when you are away from us. You talk bad, while you're, but when you are with us, you are not that bad. But Paul said, listen, don't have me to be bad. Don't have me to show my authority when I come to you. That's just you talking. But don't have me to show my authority when I get there. Paul's authority, his apostolic authority, was being opposed. I mentioned to you last night that wherever you have authority, you will have opposition. Yes, amen. And you've got to know that. And you can't get upset with the people who are opposing you. All right. All right now. You have got to keep your heart clean. Because what the enemy wants you to do is to look at the individual. Uh-huh. Come on. So that you will be upset with them so that you would be angry with them, so that you would be disappointed with them. And listen, all the time you are uh, stopping yourself from hearing from God like you need to hear from God. Amen. You have to be able, you are able, but you're going to have to forgive people. You have to release people quickly Amen. and let them go. Don't meditate on it because, listen, what we think on will stir up our emotions. Yes. Right. Yes. If I think about what you said to me, if I think about how you talked about my mama, yeah. if I think about how you talked about my children, talked about my wife, talked about me, the more I think about it, the, more, the hotter I'm going to be. You're right. Amen. So it's best that if we will quickly forgive. Amen. Amen. Quickly forgive and release them. Yeah. Now, Opposition will come against you. Mm -hmm. Jesus was opposed. Y'all know that? Yes, the twelve were opposed. And here Paul and others were opposed in their authority. Our authority will be opposed. Yes. Some people don't want to be in authority because they don't want the opposition. Yes. But listen, if God has caused you, called you to that place of authority, of leadership, all you need to do is receive that. Mm -hmm. And then you need to forgive. I'm going to keep saying this. Because, Amen. listen, some of the very people that you think that love you so well will oppose you. Come on, Pastor. Yes. I'm talking about family. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> right. Amen. Uh, oh, yeah. The devil will use whoever will allow him to yeah. use Amen. him. And sometimes it's the closest people. You are right. Amen. Closest people to us. To so your authority will be challenged. But we cannot respond to this. Respond to this opposition by according to the flesh. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3. Watch this. For, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Now watch this. He said, we do not war after the flesh. But let me just tell you this. We do war. Mm -hmm. Amen. We Amen. do war. We do not walk in the We, For though we walk in the flesh, we, we live in these physical bodies. Mm -hmm. These, our, 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 our bodies are weak. They are frail. Uh, we, are, we, we, have, uh, we, we, we have temptations that we have to deal with because of this flesh. This flesh is not saved. Mm, right, right, Your right. flesh is not saved. Amen. So you, you have to deal with that. Though we live in this and we have to deal with the temptations of this flesh. How many of you ever want to cut some folks out and you know you're saved? <laughs> okay, so y'all, so y'all, so 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 you know you say, you know you say that by Holy Ghost feel, but you had a few cuss words right there. Amen. <laughs> They didn't come out, but they were. They were. <laughs> Somebody say. <laughs> they're right there. They're right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
So we have this flesh that we have to deal with. We are we live in this. We watch this now. When I say we, I'm talking about the spirit man. Uh-huh. Man is three parts. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Man is spirit. Spirit uh-huh. man. Yes. Man possesses a soul. Uh-huh. The mind, the will, the emotion, the intellect. But man lives in a physical body. Yes. When you look here, you don't see me. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Think about it. Yes. You don't see me. You just see the tabernacle. Uh-huh. You just see the tent. Uh-huh. You just see the temporary dwelling place for me. Yes. Amen. Because the real me is on the inside. Yes. Right. Now watch this. If we would get a revelation of this, we will spend as much time on the inward man oh my God. as we do on the outward man. Come on. Come on. We ought to spend some time on the outward man. But sometimes we spend too much time on the outward man and not enough time on the inward man. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 So we, the, the, us on, the person on the inside, have to deal with this thing. We have authority over it now. Yes. We can't go into that, but we do. We have control over this. Amen, amen, amen. 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 You're right. Brethren, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you, watch this, you, you do this. Yes. The man on the inside. Yes. That you present your body. Uh-huh. Because your body is not you. You you do something with your body. You have control over that. Uh-huh. Lord help us. Yeah. Lord, yeah, I'm talking about all of us. Yeah, Lord help us. We have control. You present your bodies, a living sacrifice, only except unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then you be not conformed. To the world, yeah. to this cosmos, uh-huh. to this sa- satanic right, sta- system. Yeah. Amen. Don't be conformed to that, but be transformed. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Now, watch the statement that, because that's important. It's yeah. your responsibility. Watch this now. I'm about to mess up some of your theology. That God is not going to renew your mind. Come on here, Pastor. That's right. Come on here. Quit asking God to renew your mind. No. Oh, I just miss y'all. <laughs> <laughs> just miss you. What the words say right here? That's your responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're constantly waiting on God to renew our mind. Some of us been waiting 20 years. <laughs> Come on now. We've been waiting, but it has not happened. And God says, I've already given you the authority yes, that's right. That's right. to do glory. something with your mind. Glory, glory. Yes, sir. We have to take control over our mind. Glory yes. to God. All right. Yes. Now watch this. But though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. That word war, it means, it means to wage war. It means to go to war. It, watch this. It means to fight. Yeah. Come on. Somebody say fight. Fight. Now watch this. Now we, we, we. because of certain passages of scriptures in the Bible, uh, we have come to the conclusion that we don't have to fight. But we won't. We won't let God do all. Come on now, the fighting for us. I know I'm messing with you. Yeah. We want God to do all the fighting for us. But that's not what the Bible teaches. We're right at the place right now. That Paul, Paul said, listen, we do fight. That's what he said. Watch this. And then he goes on to say, well, let me just say this. As a soldier of God, in the army of God, you're going to have to fight. Yes. Amen. Soldier, yes. you have got to fight. That's right. Soldiers fight. Soldiers fight. Amen. Now, we're not fighting for the victory. All right. Come on. Make that final. We're fighting from our place of victory. Amen. 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 Now, let me give you a little illustration with that. When I was the neighborhood.
neighborhood I grew up, grew up in, uh, that was the high school from us, about 150 yards from where we live. And at that high school, there is a high hill at, at the high school. And when we were younger, we used to play on that hill. And we would play king of the hill. I don't know, anybody know come on. Anybody ever been there? The king of the hill. That means whoever is on top of that hill is the king. But there are other folks trying to get you off that hill. Uh -huh. They're trying to take your place. Now watch this. You already have the hill. Amen. Uh, Amen. You already have the hill. But now you've got to fight to keep the hill. You got to fight to keep the hill. You are, that's where we already have the victory. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We're not fighting to get the victory. Yeah. We're fighting from our place of victory. Yeah. That changes your whole mindset now when you're fighting. Come on, but you got to fight. Uh -huh. Because now you say, you're not, you don't say, I, I'm going to get healed. I'm here. You say, I am healed. Yeah. Watch this. You, you don't say, I'm going to have enough finances one day. You say, I already got it. Amen. You understand? Now, you still broke in the natural. Uh -huh. She's talking about this. We're talking about the confession thing. But you're declaring the word of God. Yes. The word of God says, if I give. Come on, Again, I understand the, the context of that is talking about forgiveness and other things. Yes. But I can use that scripture. Amen. If I give. It might be given. Now, y'all yeah. listening? I'm testing you. You got to pay attention. Because sometimes preachers will say something that ain't in the Word. Come on here, Pastor. Amen. 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 And we will say, amen. The Bible says, if we give, it might be given unto yeah. 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 It shall be given yeah. another. Watch this. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Shall it fall out of the sky. And no, no, no. no, no, no. Not what it says. Not what it says. Is that, that ain't what it says. No. Not what it says. Amen. If we give, it shall be given another. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together and watch this. You got to get this. Shall men give to us? Now watch this. So I'm not. I'm not looking for money to, to, to grow on a tree. Uh huh. I'm not looking for money to just show up on my desk on my nightstand. Uh huh. I'm looking at some human being. Yeah. Some person. Because God is going to move on them to give to me. Amen. How many of y'all have experienced that in your lifetime? Yeah. Amen. 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 Now watch this. We're not fighting for the victory. We're fighting from our place of victory. Amen. You're going to have to fight. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want you to get that. So, you, so we won't continue to just sit around and wait. Wonder why some things have not happened. Wonder why some things have not come to pass in my life. I've been praying and I've been asking God to do these things in my life, but God has given you and I authority to do some things ourselves. Amen. 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 You're going to have to fight. The victory has already been won by Christ Jesus, and since we are in Christ, we have the victory as well. Colossians chapter 2. Uh, 13 through 15, you'll write this down. This is, not, this is the whole one, Christian Standard Bible. He says, And when you were dead in trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, mm -hmm. he made you alive with him and forgave us all our trespasses. Mm -hmm. He erased the certificate of death and its obligation that was against us and opposed to us and has taken it out of the way by nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and disgraced them publicly. He triumphed over them by it. Last, last night, I kind of mentioned a little bit about this. King James said that he spoiled principalities. He stripped them of everything that they had. Paraded them 
through the spirit world. Amen. Because that's what kings used to do when they took over the kingdom. Uh -huh. They would go get the king, strip him naked, put him on a heart, and parade him in front of everybody. Uh -huh. yes. Letting everybody know that he is defeated. Yes. And that's what Jesus did with the devil. Yeah. The spirit world knows that you already got the victory. Uh -huh. But the problem is you don't. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. The spirit world already knows that you have authority. The problem is that the church don't. That's right. Amen. But it's time for us to know that, not just know it, but it's time for us to walk in it. Woo! Amen. My God. Amen. It's time for us to walk in it. It's time for you to stand up and walk in that authority. You say, you say, you say, I hear you, I hear you, you say, you, you say, Pastor Brown. I ain't did nothing. No, you haven't. <laughs> and you don't deserve it. But your elder brother, Come on, now. Right now. Jesus accomplished Jesus. all of this yes. just for you. Yes. And he gave it to you. Now I need you to take it and walk in it. Yes. You are my body in the earth. You go and take authority. Yes. You go do it. You go do it. So I say, I, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do, gonna do, it. do it. No, no, you can't say that. Now, don't say it like that. Y'all don't mean it. I just, you you got to say, I, 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 I'm going to do it. 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 I'm going to get there. I'm starting that way, but, uh, but then I'm going to get to the place. I, 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 I'm doing that. Yeah, right. Amen. But you got to start somewhere. Yeah. All right. Read verses 3 through 5 and the back to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war up the flesh. Now watch this. For the weapons of our warfare are not corner of a mighty through God to the pulling down the stronghold, casting down imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, if you're looking at text closely, you will see you will see military terminology. All right now. Mm -hmm. All right now. If you're looking at text closely, you will see military terminology. Number one, you see the word war. Mm -hmm. That's war. That means we're going to fight. Yes. Number two, you'll see the word warfare. Right. Now that yeah. word warfare in the original language is the word strategia, mm -hmm. which where we get our word strategy. Oh, Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Where we get our word strategy from. Now, everybody that's going to war needs a strategy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. You don't just go to fight. <laughs> you don't just go to war. You need a plan. Uh -huh. You need a strategy. That's good. And that's what Paul is saying now listen, Paul is laying down some information for every leader in every position. It, as a pastor, pastors need strategy. Amen. They need a plan when they go. Listen, a youth minister don't just go teaching youth ministry because you love it, you got a heart for it, but you need a strategy when you go there. Right. Don't just go teaching children's ministry because you, I believe God called me. Yes, God called me, but God... You need to give me a strategy. That's right. Uh -huh. I need a strategy so I can do it. Because I'm going, it's a war. That's right. Yeah. You got to understand. Paul understood, watch this, strategic ministry. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He uses the term like war. He uses the term like warfare. He uses the word strongholds. He uses the word captivity or captive because that's what people did when they went to war. Mm -hmm. yes, amen. If you think about it, during those times, there were the cities were walled cities. Mm -hmm. that's right. A lot of cities were walled. The walls were there, watch this, to keep the enemy out, uh -huh. to keep those which were in there safe and secure. If that enemy wanted to take the city, that enemy had to 
pour down the wall. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. So Paul is saying, watch this, the weapons, weapons, the weapons, that means those are instruments used to what? Silence. I got weapons and I need to use them. Y'all have heard all that. You can know a bunch of them. You can, you can talk about them and that's great. But those weapons are used to fight. Yes. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not fleshly. Yes. They are not natural. Yes. I'm not fighting these folks that are coming at me, yes. that are accusing me with natural cuss words. Yes. But it's I'm using spiritual weapons uh -huh. to fight them. The weapons of our warfare are not corner, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds or pulling down the walls. Uh -huh. So when I go to ministry, when I go to ministry, when I go to, go to pastor, I need to know what kind of walls are there. Amen. Amen. Watch this. Here's why. Because behind those walls, are some thoughts. Uh, yeah. mm. The strongholds, strongholds represents patterns of thinking uh -huh. that have been built up in the mind, in our minds over a period of time. Right. Right. And they could be wrong. You're right. For the most part, they really Amen. are. Amen. Amen. And listen, can I be honest with you? A lot of the strongholds that Christians have, especially if you've been in church for a long time, you got them in church. Right. Because <laughs> watch this. When you were younger, you heard a lot of stuff in church. But then when you start reading the Bible for yourself, you said, <laughs> that ain't in the Bible. That's not in the Word. But that stuff has been built up in you. And you, but I don't care how many times somebody would say that's not in there. You said no. You gonna believe the no that's in there, that, that's in there. But now those strongholds, as a as a leader, it has has to be a, attacked. Yeah. We're gonna beat on that thing. We're gonna believe. We're gonna beat on uh, what the devil has planted in our mind over and over and over again until we pull that thing down. Yes. Till we pull that stronghold down, yes. that pattern of thinking uh -huh. that's been built up in our minds over a period of time that we think is right. Yeah. Once we pull it down, the wall down, now we can go behind the wall. Uh -huh. And we can take those thoughts Pastors that are there 
by the will of God. They hadn't been set in by anybody else. They hadn't been set in because they're educated. They've been set in by God. Listen, we have pastors pastoring that should not be pastoring. Amen. 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 Yep, I said it.
I, but nobody is recognizing me. I see folks come from off the street, but they're not really coming from off the street. But it's, they, they're not members here. They come here for just a little while, two, three weeks. They are. The church is more people feeling the same way I'm feeling. And there's a little buzz going on in the church. So we're getting ready to leave. We're getting ready to leave. You ought to come on and go with us. I mean, you know, I'm on the verge. I'm about to go. That sounds good to me. I'm not going to be leaving by myself. But it was in that moment I heard from God. Now watch this now. Let me just tell you this. I didn't just hear from God because I was there. But I've been praying. I've been praying and seeking God. And God put that scripture, this is early on, put this passage in my heart, dropped it in there. I didn't even know that this was the word in the book. Went there. Everything God said was there. I got so excited. God talking to me, showing me some things that I wouldn't told other people. And I found out that what God had showed me a lady said, now listen, I think John Osteen, not Joel, John Osteen got a teaching on exactly that. I said, no. Then I found out somebody else, I guess now I'm, I'm immature. I'm saying, I'm disappointed that I'm not the only one God showed this. <laughs> y'all have never been there, y'all. I'm disappointed. That's immature. But I found out it was really confirmation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in those passages, that God talked to me about this. A place called there. Amen. Amen. That's what he said to me. And when I went to that passage, I saw the word there like I had never seen it before. Mm -hmm. It's there many times. God told him to go to the brook. He says, for I have commanded the raven to feed you there. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying? Uh -huh. If he had not went there, he would not have been protected. Because they were looking for him, number one. If he had not been there, he would not have gotten fed by God. God had the ravens. I'm talking about ravens bring him food. And he drank from the brook. While wow, there was a drought. God took care of him. Because he went where God told him to be. Watch this now. Watch this now. And then when the brook dried up. Because somebody. I was managing somebody last night. And they were, they were considering moving forward. I talked to them about this. I said the brook may dry up. But it may not be time for you to leave. You know you got to leave. But it ain't time. Mm -hmm. And this is when you know it's time, God says it's time. Yeah. The man of God did not leave. Even though the brook dried up, the man of God did not leave until he got word from God to tell him where to go. Uh -huh. We, You have got to get this. That I need to be at the place where God called me to be. You need to be at the place where God called you to be. Watch this. There may be some of you in here tonight that have been kind of torn between where you are right now. Where you are as far as your leadership is concerned. You're not really sure if you should be there. God talking to you tonight. You need to find out where you need to be. Listen, if that's you, just stand up. Stand up right where you are. If that's you, just stand up. Just stand up. If you just, you kind of torn, you kind of torn right now, just stand up. You just kind of stand up. Come on, over on this side. Just kind of stand up. I'm just kind of torn. Listen, you got, you got to understand that God is talking to you. This is not just a moment. I didn't plan this. This is your moment. God is giving you instructions right now. You need to find out where you need to be. Man of God, in the back. You need to be 
under somebody who can groom you. I don't know if is, is he is he in we don't we don't have church. Um actually she's in my class in July. Okay. Yeah. Oh so she's no, no, actually yes. Um no okay. she, she she actually was a prophetess, but okay. um, yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Yeah, you need to be under somebody who can groom you for, as she said to me earlier, your next level your next level in ministry. I didn't get to pray for you last night. You hung around, but I didn't get to pray. You know what? You need to be under somebody, man, that's going to groom you. And, and if I may just do a release here, although you guys are coming to this conference, I'm not a man. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You have to be under a leadership. I, I need to take their, their number, their names. Oh, Y'all need to stay in contact. No, I'm serious. Just as a mentor, maybe. And then maybe direct him to where he should go because they, I think they stay in Arizona, correct? So you know what I'm saying? Just like a mentorship. You can have mentorship all over the world. You just you know maybe email, contact, whatever the case may be, until he can find someone in that area that can usurp authority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe just stay in contact by email or something. Whatever the case is. Yeah. Amen. Because because many of you many of you in here. You have called, you have next level calling on your life. Yeah, my God. Yes. And maybe the place where you have been has helped you as as much as they can. That's not to say anything negative about where you are. Mm -hmm. They have helped you as much as you, as they can mm -hmm. get you to the place. But you sense something bigger. You sense something greater. You sense something else. I need you, and I I'm not able to get this where I am right now. And so we, you need to find out where that place is. God is calling you higher. Amen. There's some stuff he want to show you, but you won't come up. There's some things on top of this building, or on the tenth floor out of your window, that you can see that you can't see on, on the first floor. Right. So you get, if you'll obey God, find out where God wants you to be. Once you start moving up, you're going to see things that you've never seen before. Because you can't see them where you are right now. You can't see them where you are right now. And let me just tell you this. There's elevation. Elevation, but... Before elevation, I want you to hear me. There's consecration. You have to consecrate yourself to God. And as you do, God's going to elevate you. You're going to see some things. 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 Listen, I believe that all of you who have come to this conference, all of you have come to this conference, God see you. You sacrificed. You sacrificed to be here. Uh -huh. yes, 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 yes. And God's going to reward that. Amen. Y'all can sit down. Thank you. Amen. You know, that was confirmation because her and I talked last night and um, I said, God said that we're all going to another level. That's another reason I was crying at three o'clock in the morning because I was like, oh, another level? There, there is another, you know, because there, there are levels of consecration, of dedication, of revelation, of manifestation. It's real. Because a lot of you, and you didn't even know that, a lot of them shared with me how they got here. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. They struggle, they sacrifice. God will reward them. It's like he said, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. All righty, praise God, praise God. We're we, we actually getting ready to do something right now, so just move on.